Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I like to talk about coding around these parts. Today I have another exciting new installment of my very fun code review segment on this channel where I review or read open source libraries on the internet to uncover how they do what they do. Today's installment of code review, we will be looking at the new ZX library, which is from Google, but also not by Google. Google has this really weird thing where um, <laughs> they let engineers open source things that they've created, but it's not actually a supported Google product, which I have no idea what that means. It basically means it's free for you to use, but it's also for their own use cases. Um, this case, this is a tool for writing better scripts. So what does that mean? Um, the problem that exists in Node is that when you're writing scripts, it can actually be pretty cumbersome to write a script with Node. Um, you want a scripting language, but for just doing things like cat or git branch, it actually becomes pretty painful to do that with Node. If you look at the how Node does it, there's the child process module that lets you spawn subprocesses like ls to like list a directory. And to actually have that work correctly in your Node script requires all this code, which is ridiculous. You have to require the module, you have to spawn the process, you have to pipe the output both on standard out, standard error, and then also on close. It is a laborious, laborious process that is not fun. And that is where ZX comes in, where it provides this nice little dollar sign symbol, similar to jQuery, that lets you just write the command that you wanna write. So if you do get branch show current, you can await the response and get the branch to kind of see what happens. You can promise all these sleeps. Any shell script that you want to run, you can just run through ZX, which makes it really easy to write scripts really fast. It's a pretty clever, clever library. It has a pretty small API as well. It has the dollar sign uh, back tab command. Uh, this thing is called a um, tagged template. So there, uh, you may know in JavaScript, there's um, template literals, which is a way for you to write long strings and interpolate inside of them. But what you might not know is there's this thing called tag templates, which is in a more advanced form of template liberals that lets you parse template liberals with a function. So you could have a function called my tag, which is given arguments like the string and interpolated expressions in that string, which means that you can then use it like this. So this is the my tag tag template, blah. blah such that when you write this with this template literal, with these expressions, this function is called, and this string is given this entire raw string, and person expression become, so you can see here strings zero, one, two, this is the broken up string sections of it, and then you have the expressions in the argument. So this is person and age, the actual values, and then you can kind of interpolate it if you want to make whatever you want. So this is a kind of a necessary precursor before we actually review ZX because it leverages this immensely because underneath the hood, that's what dollar sign is. It is a tagged template literal, lets you do fun things. So you have the dollar sign, you have a process promise, which is just an extension of promise, which gives you some more helpful methods on it such as piping, process output. There is the CD function, which makes it easy to change directory. Fetch, which is a wrap around node fetch. Question, which is a wrap around the read line package. So you can kind of just ask a question and get input by the user. Sleep, wrap around set timeout. No throw, which changes the behavior of dollar sign to not throw an exception on non-zero exit codes. And I guess, oh, so then there's also some packages that they just kind of include by default because they're common enough that you just want to have them for free. FS Extra is a great package with nice extensions to Node and the OS package, Minimus, etc., etc. Shell, prefix, okay. So this is kind of the API about how it works. So the question becomes, how does it do it? Well, let's get into the code review. 
So first things first, this is a very small repo, which is why I chose it for the code review because well, look at that, four days ago it bumped into 2.0. I didn't realize that, that's cool. Um, the majority of all the functionality, I believe, is in index.mjs, which is a uh, module JS. You can kind of test this by looking at package.js, and you can see the main def defined here is index.mjs. So this is where we're going to be spending most of our time, which is what actually defines how the library works. So export is all the functions that are exported by the library. And as I mentioned before, we have the dollar sign function. And as mentioned before, this is a tagged template. And as you can see here, it has the pieces of the string and all the arguments that are being given as a splat. So this is all the arguments over here that if you want to interpolate values, if you want to, you know, store the name of a git branch in a variable, you can interpolate that yourself. And I believe that's mostly what's going on here. So if you look at ours, you can kind of see how it's interpolating it into the actual commands. You have pieces. This is the command that you actually want to run, the subprocess command, because you're taking it from the first pieces zero. As you can see here, string zero is the first part before any interpolation. And there's a few flags here, verbose, which just kind of, you know, uh, is on by default and kind of just echoes back what it's doing. And then you can see here that's going through the entire array of arguments. And if arguments itself is an array, then it maps over that. Otherwise, it's just going to interpolate the argument. So this args one. So for example, if we have, um, as an example, dollar sign, uh, get checkout branch name, this is going to take this value and put it into the full command. And then there's a few little things here. So substitute is defined down here, which is just sanitizing the string largely. And then you have quote, kind of this little extension, which makes sure that all things are nicely escaped so that you don't have anything wrong there. And you can kind of define, I think if you go back to the home page, you can see uh, specifies a function for escaping special characters during command substitution. So it makes sure that whatever you put in there is properly escaped when you actually run it. Um, here's the command. Here's the verbose, which just logs out the actual command that's going to be ran. The options, these are just default commands in here. This is where it actually sp spawns the command. So you have the prefix. What is prefix again? I don't remember. Prefix specifies the command that will be prefixed to all commands run. Ah, so you can set some default to run before everything, which is some bash food that I do not know what it does. And then you have the child process. So this is spawn. This is from the child process module because it is node. There is spawn right here. So it's just using the spawn command to actually start things off right here. And it has the child. And what it's doing is it's wrapping all those event listeners around this process po promise to, and this process promise, I believe, is what is actually returned. Yes. If you look at the bottom of this page, you can see the promise is returned. And this process promise essentially, God, that's so hard to say fast. This process promise is what essentially provides the more elegant API to consume the sub process that you are spawning. Inside of here, you have on exit, on close, process output to standardize the output. And what is it going to resolve? So, um, some, if the code zero, which means there's no error, there's no throw, then resolve the output of the command. Um, this process has, um, if the standard in is TTY, then pipe it to standard in, uh, and all these little wrappers to make sure that you are piping the input and output correctly so that it just works as if you just ran it, um, in bash. Uh, correctly. So that's kind of the whole thing here. Uh, it behooves us to understand how this works. Um, process promise. So if I go down to where it's defined, it's extending promise. It has some property getters here to return standard in. This is the child uh, piping. So you can make it easy to pipe uh, things that just pretty much return things nice and easy. 
This is a uh, property getter in JavaScript, so you can get the promise and just do dot standard in rather than having to do this dot child that standard in. So if you have um, the promise, you can just do standard in, and that's going to work because this is a get the property getter, and that's just a nice little nice that you don't have to worry about this. I don't know why they did that, but I guess it makes their lives a little bit happier. Uh, process output, whoops, whoops, is. I close that page process output extends error and this is this is cool it's actually using native private instance properties so these are private properties that can't be accessed outside of this class and this is to provide some proper encapsulation of this code which they just return them so this is two string which returns combined and this thing was really cool. This was a thing that I had to read about before actually doing this. So if you actually look to see where this inspect, kind of keep killing that. If you have to look to see where inspect's coming from, it's coming from Node's util um, module. So if you go to util and you go to uh, inspect, there's util.inspect, right? Util.inspect.custom. So util.inspect.custom uh, what this lets you do, it declares custom inspect functions such that if you use this symbol as a, here, we actually log the, an instance of this password, it re, it'll return what's in this inspect, uh, method right here. So that means that if you console log this process output, it's going to return this nicely formatted output for you, which is really, really cool. That's a really neat way of making just the ergonomics of everything a lot more pleasant to use. Okay, so that's kind of um, the dollar sign um, function, which is pretty much all the main functionality. Very neat, very tidy, nice little wrappers to make things, makes the API easier to use, nice encapsulation. Um, it's exporting argv, which is a wraparound minimus, which removes the first two arguments, which is usually node and the script name. So like when you run a node script, you're typically doing node foo.js and args here. And this slice two removes the first two things. So you don't really care about that. You just want the arguments that are being given to the script. And it's so looking at a few properties on the argument to kind of change behavior, which is fine. CD, uh, it's first checking if the path exists, which is awesome. And if it doesn't, it gives you a nice little graceful error message. This is such a funny little um, snippet right here, this new error thing. Uh, so if you do new error, let's do, this is really fun. So it's fun. Uh, make this a little bit taller. So if you do a equals new error, and you do a stack, you have a whole stack. And then if you split, at yeah this and you go to two so that's gonna be empty but i'm sure what happens here is that this call this is the call, what it's doing here is essentially getting the call stack such that it can correctly show you where this error occurred so the first two lines are typically the this function right here cd and then the global error, I guess, but this is just a neat way to get a call stack to kind of give you a reference to where the error occurred, uh, which is kind of nice. But you know, if it doesn't exist, it throws an error. Otherwise, it sets the current working directory to path. Uh, this is funny. And then this current working directory, this is kind of funny. Gosh, I keep closing that tab. My keyboard is killing me. Uh, if you look at this, how this is used, this is actually just used when you do dollar sign. It'll actually set the current working directory value. Uh, when it's actually spawning that option. That's a nice little thing, rather than actually changing directories. Question is wrapping create interface. I imagine this is part of the library. Yep, this is from the read line library, so it's just a nice little wrapper around that, with another little um, promise to wrap around things and make things nice and easy. Fetch, wrapping node fetch, some nice little utilities for verbose, verbosity. Uh, sleep is just promiseify set timeout. This is so cool because promiseify comes with node now. A little known fact, uh, util actually lets you promiseify anything that you want in node land if you want, um, which is really cool. Where is it in here? Promiseify. It takes a function following the common error first callback style that node has, where it's error, common value, 
Nice that it was standardized. And it returns a version that returns a promise. So you can have FS stats, promiseify it, and then use it as a promise. So that's what it's doing here. Is it's making set timeout <laughs> a sleep promise, which is awesome. No thrill changes behavior of the um, dollar sign that you're using. And here's those uh, classes that it was using before to just make things a little bit nicer to use. Here's some internal helper methods. You're assigning, oh, and here's fun. It's making all of these exported functions also global so that you don't actually have to import it. You can just have it be exposed in a global space. And this is also them making it easy for you to write scripts. And that's it. That's the library. That's really, really small and really, really uh, cute little library that makes a lot of raw functionality um, by just being clever in this API design. This is really showing how healthy, strong API design can really be done through a very small amount of code. And what this opens up in terms of ergonomics, in terms of what you can write, is just fantastic. Really, really cool. Uh, I wish it was kind of built into Node itself because it would make writing scripts in Node oh so much more pleasant than having to make that whole event um, all this bleh every time. Bleh. So that's the X in a nutshell. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about it as much as I did. Okay, and that was the X. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Fun little library, enjoyed it. Uh, don't use it that much, but it's kind of fun to see how something so simple can be so powerful. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, to become one in the button down below. And if not, I will see you in the next video. Until then, stay happy, stay coding. See you next week.